I'm Megan Huber. And I'm Cameron Durano. It's been a great run for Roseville Media Productions. That's right. In 2010, I the Tiger aired its first broadcast. Over the next nine years, the program would take on some name changes, set transformations, and hard-hitting stories. Let's take a look. Google took over Roseville High School this weekend. What happened during the two-day summit? Good morning. Welcome to an all new Tiger Cast News. Good morning and welcome to an all new Eye of the Tiger. An all new Eye of the Tiger. An all new Eye of the Tiger. An all new Eye of the Tiger indeed. That was actually our freshman year when Eye of the Tiger made the switch from the name Tiger Cast. It blows my mind how long ago that feels. You realize half the campus still calls us Tiger Cast, right? Yeah, no, I try not to think about it. Last week, Eye of the Tiger covered more dual enrollment courses coming to RHS. Now we take a look into one of those options, a dual enrollment business program. We got a John Bobimov with the story. Removed in the fall of 2017, business classes will be brought back through a dual enrollment course offering. However, due to the courses already in place, business classes won't be in effect until the 21-22 school year. So there's going to be an impact to our schedule. So right now we don't have business courses. So if we have a class of students that takes business, they're not taking something else. So we have to be thoughtful with how we transition that in so that it doesn't happen and, and hurt another program. Math teacher Doug Ash will take on dual enrolled economics next year and the business programs in years to follow. The online personal finance course will be integrated into a unit of the econ curriculum. In addition to teaching the Sierra Col College portion of that course, uh, the idea is to potentially also uh, add the online finance course that students are required to take and pass prior to graduation. So I would do a, a unit on personal finance that would also enable the kids to uh, pass that exam as well. The business program will be used with course pathways like culinary and engineering, which both have a business aspect. The three full culinary 3-4 might also be taking a business class to learn how to run a restaurant as a business or the business side of things and we're looking on how we can start to cross over into those other areas as well. Thanks Jonathan. If all goes according to plan, the business courses will start rolling out in two years. The Tiger tutoring attendance has nearly doubled. It added an additional tutor on Thursdays to adapt to this change. I'm, I'm happy with the numbers. I just want to find a way to be able to continue to have higher numbers even in the slower months like December where we were in the 30s compared to being in anywhere from the 15 to 20 range of students being here. Uh, like last year, um, there weren't as many people, but this year, since we have like a new supervisor and everything and the way she runs it, we have more people. Tiger Tutoring is available in room 401 to help any students with finals. We now go to Kobe Strato with sports. Good morning and welcome to this Tuesday's edition of EOTSN. I'm Kobe Estrada. One RHS senior found his passion for a sport off campus. We go to Isabella Foley with more. For most student athletes, the word strike is associated with a baseball game. But for senior Colin Allen, he hears the sound of victory. Uh, my grandpa got me into it, and I've just kind of been bowling ever since. I'm not as competitive as I used to be, but I still do it. It's a lot of fun to do. On any given Tuesday or Saturday, you'll find Colin at Fireside Lane surrounded by teammates, coaches, and family. With the encouragement from his bowling community, Colin has participated in numerous tournaments, leagues, and clubs from the age of seven. Having come from a family of bowlers, his father Rob saw the importance of fostering an environment for Colin to improve his skill. He stuck with it and he was bowling competitively for several years and he's gotten to where he is today, which is, I'm sorry to say, but much better than me. <laughs> Through bowling, Colin and Rob are able to use the time spent in the alley as an opportunity to spend time together. There's a lot of times where either I'm busy with work or he's busy with work, and it just makes it hard for us to hang out. But we always have a time once a week that we can come together and bowl. It's not just the bowling. Um, 
So obviously I'm really proud that uh, he's taken the game seriously and gotten good at it. And having parents come up to me at, tur at tournaments and tell him what a great sport he is and how supportive he is of the other bowlers, that's I think the thing that I'm most proud of. For the full article on Allen, check out yesterday's print edition of Eye of the Tiger. And in other sports news, girls and boys soccer both beat rival Wood Creek with a score of 1-0. to zero. And boys basketball plays tonight versus Whitney. And that's all in your home for Roseville High School sports, top plays, breakdowns, and more. I, the Tiger Sports Network, EOTSN. And now we go over to entertainment. Thanks, Kobe. It's crazy to think this is one of the last weeks of the decade, and it's actually the first decade that we've all fully experienced. So it just feels right to go over the best and the worst of this decade. Since the start of the 2010s, Minecraft stole our hearts and a ton of our time and became one of the most influential games of the decade. Minecraft didn't just burn out either, it's still being played by tons of people and still breaking a ton of records. Call of Duty Black Ops 2 sneaks in there too as one of the best games of the decade. You never hear anyone talking bad about Black Ops 2, and of course it wasn't a perfect game, but it was pretty dang close. Albums are a bit harder to get the best ones of the decade, but some stands out for sure. As for pop music, Taylor Swift's 1989 and Justin Timberlake's 2020 experience stand out to me as some of the best. For hip-hop, it's a real toss-up, though. Kendrick fans would say To Pimp Butterfly is the best, and it's a definite contender, but for me, the best rap album is probably J. Cole's 2014 Forest Hills Drive. But others would argue Blonde by Frank Ocean is one of the best, and Drake fans would say that it's either Take Care or More Life are his best. But honestly, I can't even vibe with Drake anymore after Pusha T announced that Drake had a kid in a diss track, which is some of the best drama of the decade for sure. The Marvel Infinity Saga cinematically defined the decade. Now, the whole series was not in the 2010s, but most of them were, and all of the many superhero movies this decade followed the blueprint of Marvel. For our last category, memes kind of developed in this decade, so it's only right to rate the best. Harambe is my personal favorite, and even though he is dead, he will never die in my heart. Vine also gave us some of the best memes, and we may never see the Vine 2, but we will always remember these last 10 years. And now we go back to news. Thanks, Jackson. Avid seniors injected some holiday spirit into their classrooms. Under the unifying theme of 2020 vision, Dean Gadway's Avid class put up a Christmas tree containing their aspirations and plans for the future. So the um, Avid seniors, um, we put together a thing where we decorate a tree in the Civic Center. And so it really helped to put our class in the Christmas spirit because we got to um, meet up and hang out and decorate our own ornaments and it was just, it was really fun. We also decorated um, our own ornaments and it was based on like what we wanted to either major in, where we were going to school or what our career would be. So it was, um, it was like looking into the future. The tree is currently on display in room 934. Everyone has a favorite Christmas jingle, whether it's something you sing along to every time it's on the radio or just a pervasive song that gets stuck in your head. Some people are more dedicated to their songs than others. Mariah Carey fanatic Shane Meadows Yaw made a vow to listen to Carey's song, All I Want for Christmas, for each day of the month. On the 1st of December, Meadows Yaw listened to the song once. By the 31st, he will listen to it 31 times on that single day. I think it's clear it's the greatest Christmas song ever written, so, you know, I, I couldn't think of a better song to do it to. It's all you need. There's only one song in my playlist right now. It's just that on repeat. It's my second year. It's going strong. You know, it's getting harder, but we can do it. Got a lot of support behind me. A lot of people who are showing there that they believe too. So it's really helpful to have everyone having my back here. I've gotten a couple people to do it. I, you know, some of my friends got into it. My sister does it too. Um, you know, I think it's a bonding experience for everybody. And uh, you know, got to spread that Christmas cheer somehow. So it works out pretty good. I can pretty much guarantee that uh, with his commitment to the challenge, he will definitely make it to the 31st. As of today, Meadows Yaw has listened to the song 153 times this month. And that's it for us today on Eye the Tiger. We wish you and your families a fun and safe winter break. Good luck on finals and see you next year.